What's going on boys and welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at the Master of Plague and Disease itself, the Unholy Death Knight and the Shadowlands free patch. Just as a reminder, I do stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday on Twitch. Link to that will be in the description below. Let's get into it. So we are here in the Ebb and Hold and we're looking at the Unholy DK today. And I'm just gonna go over some general Death Knight changes first. So all Death Knights now have access to Anti-Magic Zone. This is their raid cooldown. This causes all of your allies and yourself to take 20% reduced magic damage on a, on a two minute cooldown. This is super awesome, great utility for DKs. All Death Knights also have access to Lichborn. So this is a two minute cooldown, causes you to become undead, increases your leech by 10%, and makes you immune to charm, sleep, and fear effects. This also, since it makes you undead, interacts with Death Coil. You can use Death Coil now to heal yourself for a pretty significant amount. So this is a good, oh shit, cooldown in Arena. You're dying in Mythic Plus, you're dying to a raid encounter. You can pop Lich Bomb and spam Death Coil on yourself if you have extra burning power to keep yourself up. Good stuff overall. Um, additionally, we have Sacrificial Pact that we learn at level 54. Cost 20 runic power on a two minute cooldown causes your ghoul to explode. It deals some damage, uh, but it also heals you for 25% of your maximum health. An extra heal for death knights is pretty insane. We have a lot of self-healing, self especially as a melee class, so that's pretty sweet. We also have some additional rune forges. So I'm gonna put them up on the screen here. These are the new rune forges. I'll just kind of like let you guys look over them real quick. The most interesting one, I think, is Rune of the Apocalypse. That's the one that causes your ghouls the chance to apply debuffs, um, which is a healing reduction, increases damage taken, and reduces damage dealt to the Death Knight, and slows the death, uh, slows the target. I think that's cool, and it might be interesting to use in PvP, but all of them in general are undertuned um, compared to Fallen Crusader. Uh, Fallen Crusader is kind of our go-to for every single spec. It's the 15% strength increase. So um, maybe if these got a little bit of love tuning-wise, we'd use them, but I think Apocalypse is probably the most interesting for Unholy, and hopefully it gets buffed so we can use something different, or at least have a choice. Moving on to other changes for Unholy, uh, the biggest one is to our mastery. So Dreadblade, which is uh, Unholy's mastery, now increases the damage of your minions as well. This is great because it allows you to scale your pets for more than just haste and crit, um, and I think that it sort of balances out the secondary stats for Unholy. The next thing is Epidemic. So Epidemic Epidemic used to be a talent, it is now baseline, and it's an AoE runic power spender. I wish Frost had this, but this is amazing. Um, this causes all of your diseases to erupt. It functions in the exact same way that it did before. So you're here, you have your diseases on, and you're generating some runic power, and then I'll be able to cast it. So here, Epidemic, and you can see they all kind of exploded, did damage to each other. Kind of that little green, gooey animation fits with the unholy theme. What I think is really nice about this is you have an AoE runic power spender baseline. You don't have the talent into it. This is something you can use all the time. So you're in a mythic plus and you get a sudden doom proc. You get to press epidemic and it doesn't feel bad that you're just like sitting on that proc. Extra damage is nice and being able to use your resources in a way that gives you a choice is what makes WoW, I think, fun and interesting. So. This is an awesome change. I'm super happy with it. Let's get into the talents. So the level 15 row is exactly the same. Um, the level 25 row is pretty much the same, except Bursting Source is only affects eight targets. So again, this is the AoE target thing. Um, if you have a Festering Wound, it explodes and deals damage to up to eight targets. Ebon Fever is here and still the same, and Unholy Blight has changed. So Unholy Blight is really, really cool now. So it hits harder because it stacks up to four times, but it also applies your disease. So you'll see me running around and you'll see me like applying virulent plague to everything. And you also see how it kind of stacks up there. That debuff not only does additional damage, but it causes your pets to deal 3% additional damage per stack. That's pretty sweet. I think it's just like a good way to buff your pets and especially with the change to their mastery. This is a good change allows you to game around like so you pop unholy blight and dark transformation at the same time your pets now cleaving onto all of these targets that are taking increased damage this is a good synergistic effect i really enjoy this level 30 row is the same so there have been some changes to the level 35 row pestilent pustules and harbinger of doom are the same however harbinger of doom does affect epidemic so that's nice those free death coils are also free epidemics depending on the situation your choice 
and Soul Reaper. So Soul Reaper has changed. It actually hits like a truck now um, when a target is below 35% health. So we can just throw that on the bar here. We can actually get this mob below 35%. So see, we're getting pretty close to 35%. And of course, the mob's healing. But there we go. As it explodes, bam. I like it. I mean, it's cool that Soul Reaper has an execute component. It's cool that Soul Reaper's usable. I don't know if you'll take it over the other two talents, but it's there. Level 40 row is the same and going to level 45 row. So Pestilence is still here. Death and Decay has has a chance to uh, apply a Festering Wound to the target. That's pretty cool. Defile has changed. So now when you cast Defile, um, it will still grow. It's still a kind of an upgraded Death and Decay, but as it grows, it does additional damage. So damage on top of your damage, especially in like a Mythic Plus setting. That's pretty cool. And while we're waiting for the cooldown, we'll talk about Unholy Pact. So Unholy Pact is the, as, is, I forget what the Azerite trait is called. I'll put it up on the screen here. When you empower your ghoul, when you dark transformation your ghoul, you get this fire chains. And this fire chains hits all enemies in between you and your and your ghoulie boy over there. So this is really great. Um, it lets you kind of game your positioning to do the maximum amount of damage. That's pretty cool. Additionally, it increases your strength by 5% while it's active. That's awesome. I think this is a really interesting talent and again, fits really fits with the theme of Unholy and that's why I like it. Uh, we now have Unholy Assault. So this used to be called Unholy Frenzy um, and it used to just be a buff that increased your haste by a certain percentage. Now it's actually an attack. This really smooths out the opener and I really love this ability. So let's start on this target because it doesn't have any festering wounds. So I'm here on it. My ghoul is running in. Right off the pole, I can Unholy Assault. Now I have four wounds and then I can Apocalypse. And I instantly have my Apocalypse out at maximum stacks, ready to go. And I think this, this is sweet. Like it, it, it feels like it really reduces the clunkiness and like the global cooldown cool bloat of Unholy's opener. I really enjoy this change. I think this is a great talent. I wish it was baseline, <laughs> but you know, it, it feels really great to play with the talent. It's it's hard to it, it, it's hard to not use it um, because of how useful it is. Gargoyle is back and it's a talent still. Um, there was a time on the beta that it was baseline. I think it should be baseline. Um, personally, I think Gargoyle really fits with the theme um, of Unholy and it's something that I think all Don Holy Death Knights should have access to. It's really sweet thematically. Um, and then Army of the Damned has changed also. Death Coil and Epidemic still reduce the cooldown of Apocalypse by one second and Army of the Dead by five seconds. But additionally, um, Army of the Dead and Apocalypse now summon a Mages of the Dead, which is the another Azerite trait, which I'll link up here. I think it was just called Unholy Mages. So we're here and we're gonna pop apocalypse and you will see there there's my little mage boy back there and he does a pretty significant amount of damage he's a nice little buff to the overall cds of these and and the fact that you're you know going to be getting them up more often is really nice it only summons one per army of the dead and one per apocalypse i feel like army of the dead being a longer cooldown it should summon at least two but Again, like that's just me. I just I, th I think you could buff that talent a little bit more and make it more interesting. But again, based upon the mastery scaling, like you know, if you have a ton of mastery, these guys are going to pop off. Like they already hit pretty pretty hard as it is. And then going back to summon gargoyle now that it's now that everything's off cooldown. Summon gargoyle is still the same. Um, it's a three minute cooldown, lasts for thirty seconds. And the general idea is that you want to build up some runic power before you cast it. So you have ways to buff it Be because every two runic power you spend increases its damage by 1%. So I'm going to pop Gargoyle now that I have almost a full bar. I'm going to use my Sudden Doom and then sort of dump Death Coils as best I can. And I mean, it like it hits decently hard, I would say. The main thing for me is that it doesn't feel super impactful. There was a time when like Gargoyle hit like a freight train for Unholy. Gargoyle hit really hard and like you put your Gargoyle in something in PvP and it would just die and it felt so good. Um, now it's like, 
I mean, you still have to maintain it and it does a decent amount. Gargoyle there did 5% of my damage during that little opener sequence. Um, now, like a lot of this is inflated because we have virulent plague hitting all the targets around me because I can't really control its AOE, but it doesn't feel bursty and punchy enough. Like Unholy Assault feels more like a burst cooldown than Gargoyle, and that's kind of upsetting. Um, I wish Gargoyle hit way harder baseline and then buffing it with the runic power just kind of like really, really amped it up. I think that would be a better change. Overall, I think Unholy is in a great spot. It feels much smoother to play, especially with the changes to Army of the Dead only costing one rune, um, and the Festering, or I'm sorry, the um, un Unholy Assault talent, uh, that like applying four Festering Wounds, and then you being able to jump right into your Apocalypse, especially on a new target. Like, even bouncing from pack to pack in Mythic Plus, it's like you can just like instantly start doing damage, and it feels... It feels good. Unholy Pact feels great. Extra Strength is good. Unholy Blight feels good. It seems like Unholy's damage is more in your face instantly than it has been in the past. It required a lot more setup before and was rewarding for that setup. But at the same time, sometimes it's it's nice to just go in and hit something with your beat stick, you know? So that's my thoughts on Unholy, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, just so you know, uh, any like... UI setup is in my UI video. I'll link that in the description below um, if you guys are interested in checking that out. Any questions, comments, concerns, you can ask me on stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday on Twitch. Link to that will be in the description below. And I will catch you guys in the next one.